Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. In the last month, most people have proven willing to let public health officials curb their freedoms. No bars? We'll drink at home. No libraries? We'll watch Netflix instead. Even St. Louis County's decision to close some parks was largely met with acceptance. Just one thing seems to have riled up Americans during this pandemic, and that's when Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer issued an order that was interpreted as ordering garden centers and greenhouses to close, and even barring shops that were open from selling gardening supplies. People freaked out over this. And now, here in Missouri, you still have the right to garden, and Daria McKelvey wants to help you take advantage of it. She's the supervisor of home gardening information and outreach at the Missouri Botanical Garden, and she's here to take our questions, to offer advice, and generally help you use all that extra time that you used to spend socializing to instead cultivate a patch of the earth. So, Daria McKelvey, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So before we dive into some of these questions, why does gardening just seem like such a perfect pastime for this pandemic? Oh, well, first of all, gardening is fantastic in and of itself. Let's just put it that way. (laughs) But it allows you a chance to get outside in your backyard to get some fresh air. You get exercise. And then it also helps you to become more aware of your surroundings. I mean, you start looking at the intricacies of, you know, your leaves and your plants, um, you start having a, a care for what, you, what you're seeing and what you're growing, and then all the other pieces that interact with your plants in your yard and your garden. It's just there's so many benefits to, to gardening right now. You make a great case. Um, so for those of us who are feeling called to get started on this, what is the ideal time for gardening? Like, should we actually be planting right now? It feels like it's like, what, 40 degrees out there. It's cold. Is this the right time right. to put those seeds in the ground? We're getting really close. Like, actually, um, tomorrow, the uh, the 15th, is typically the St. Louis's average annual or a frost date. Hmm. So that's, on average, the last day we should see frost. Now, it can vary from year to year, so I would hold off just a little bit. I was looking at the weather just before uh, we got on here, and there is going to be some still 30-degree temperatures that are coming up. Uh, this week. So don't put everything out, but you can start with some cool season like vegetables, like transplants, and some of your more hardier plants that can tolerate those temperatures. When you say a transplant, uh, what what do you mean by that? A transplant is something you started inside. So if you started your vegetable seeds inside, like, you know, growing them in a peat pot or Mm. something, so you, uh, which is really good because it allows, um, when all you have to do is take that plant and stick it outside and it's got um, a little bit of time to, I mean, you're, you've got a head start in growing, mm-hmm. basically. But you wouldn't want to move it outside until if you're looking at the weather, you don't see anything predicted under 30. Is that sort of the key yeah. temperature there? Right. Your cool season crops like your like broccoli and Brussels sprouts and things like that, they can tolerate, at least the soil temperature has to be about 40 to 45 degrees, um, but, and they're okay. And so if we're looking for a 40 degree soil temperature, can it stay that warm even if it drops down to 30 at night? How does that correlate? Um, It can stay like, you know, soil is a huge material, so the fluctuations aren't going to be huge. Mm -hmm. Um, So even like if we have a really sunny day and the soil warms up, it's going to hold some of that heat. Um, It'll start changing if we we were like consistently cold. Okay. But Mm -hmm. so some of those cooler weather crops, you're saying those might be okay to put in even now. Mm-hmm. Yes. So broccoli, this is what we yep. should be planting. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, your cabbage and kale, garlic, onions, radishes, and even your salad greens are perfect perfect plants for right now. Okay, so you can get that going. And things like mm-hmm. tomatoes, you can start that indoors. Um, yes. We've actually got some questions from our listeners. Some have come in through social media, um, and we do want to encourage you, if you're listening, feel free to join the conversation. You can give us a call at 314-382-8255. That's 382-TALK. You can also send us a tweet at STL on air. Uh, Debbie writes on Facebook, I want to plant native and pollinator and natural habitat friendly in my large yard. But also, what is safe for my chickens and turkey to be around and perhaps eat because they will nibble for sure? Is there a concern that chickens and turkeys could be poisoned by um, just the average plant that Debbie might be planting? Oh, that is a good question. Um, there might be some, I, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head which one specifically might harm chickens. You may want to, in your garden, like 
like put up a barrier so that the chickens can be in one space and then your natives can be in another and that would prevent them from nibbling on anything, period, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so keep those chickens safe. <laughs> yes. Um, Sarah also writes, I love this question because even for those of us who aren't gardeners, we might benefit from what Sarah's up to. She says, my front yard on Arsenal faces Tower Grove Park. We have big cement planters on the ledge of the porch. What do you recommend planting there for some color? Ooh, you can have, a, there's actually a lot of things you can plant. I mean, if you're looking for annuals, um, you know, there's so much color variety that you can choose from. Um, I'm trying to think of, you know, like celosias. Um, you can plant some, oof, sorry, my brain's going blank. <laughs> Not, nothing like us putting you on the spot here. Um, oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> celosia. Um, what is a celosia? A uh, feather plume. I'm sorry, I tend to use botanical names a lot. Um, celosia is like, there's a, it's called feather plume. And it's good for like really sunny areas. It's got uh, it's a very vibrant pink color, and some mm-hmm. of them actually come in like yellows and sort of oranges. Um, I actually saw a couple at the zoo last year, a planting bed with uh, those in there. Hmm, Celosia, those sound lovely. Um, Sarah, we hope you encourage that um, for your yard facing Tower Grove Park. We also have a question from Leah on Facebook. She asks, "When is a good time to trim back your boxwoods?" Actually, um, after. You know, the threat of frost, basically. Um, so we're get, within the next couple of weeks is a good time to do that. Um, that way that they don't get any damage. If we did get cold weather, they don't get damaged. So um, now would be a really good time. So is that the case for pretty much all trees? This is the time to be in there trimming? Or is it different depending on the, the species? It can vary. Um, a lot of trees and shrubs actually benefit from pruning, like during the late winter and early spring. If you're like before they start flushing out, that's when pruning is really uh, at its best. Um, and you can always, I always, I always say this, like you can always do maintenance pruning. Like if there is a limb or something that is in the way or is causing a problem, or if the you know stem is dead, like hmm. if you scratch the bark and it's just it's just gone. Um, you can always prune those out. Um, uh, that's fine. Um, but generally, early spring is a good time for pruning. Okay, for so things. this is something people can do in their isolation. Get out there and prune. Uh, Tom, one of our listeners, just sent us an email, and he writes, could Daria McKelvey recommend one book or a set of books that reliably answers many vital gardening questions, questions such as, what does it mean when your tomato plant's leaves turn yellow? I'm tired of searching the web, looking for answers, and getting so many conflicting ones. Any thoughts on a book or series that that Tom could get some of his answers from? Actually, I'm not going to recommend a book. I'm going to me- recommend our own Gardening Help website, oh. um, gardeninghelp.org, all one word. And on it, we do have, um, on the left-hand side, there's a bar that's, and it'll say Advice, Tips, and Resources. And you'll see a uh, sort of a drop-down box. And we do have a wide variety of pages on pest information. Hmm. So, like, if your leaves are, like... Um, like you can look up the your your plant and see if there's any uh, pest or disease information, uh, with, along with pictures that sh- that you can match to see if what you know determine what you're looking at, what's going on with your plant. Now, I will say that a lot of times, um, sometimes when plants like all of a sudden go yellow or the leaves go yellow, there can be multiple factors. It could be water, it could be heat, um, you know. But if that the website should kind of at least help you to narrow down. Uh, or cancel out some of the options. Okay. And that Missouri Botanical Garden website, um, I guess this is a great time to plug it. I understand you also have a list of places on there that are doing curbside pickup for gardening supplies. um, And that seems like that's something that could be super helpful right now. Yes. uh, We've created a list. Actually, part of our communications team helped out creating a, uh, a map of all the garden centers that are currently open and offering curbside and or delivery service. So you can see where those are located. It's on a Google map. They're pinned and they have links to all their websites um, for what that, you know, nursery is going, uh, what their policy is. And most of them are like ordering online and then they'll either, you'd have a pickup time or they might deliver it to you. Okay. And so that's on the Missouri Botanical Gardens website. Uh, Daria McKelvey, thank you so much for joining us today. 
You're welcome. Thank you. And Daria, again, is the Supervisor of Home Gardening Information and Outreach at the Missouri Botanical Garden. Um, For those who have questions we weren't able to get to, Justine Kandra, who's a horticulturalist at the garden, is doing a Twitter takeover today on the garden's main account from 2 to 3 p.m. today. She'll be answering all your home gardening questions. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio. That's 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.